What's going on everybody? This is Justin with me, myself, and Dice, a channel dedicated to solo board games. And if this is your first time on the channel, welcome! We do video playthroughs of solo board games and other board game related content. So if you enjoyed this, definitely think about giving this video a thumbs up, that really helps the channel. And definitely think about subscribing if you aren't already. Today we'll be playing Lost Ruins of Arnak. This is a game where we'll be building our decks, exploring temples and finding lost treasure all while racing against another archaeological opponent. So let's get down to the table and play Lost Ruins of Arnak. Welcome down to the table, everyone, where I have everything set up for our first game of Lost Ruins of Arnak. Today we're going to be playing, I'm a little rusty, so we're going to be playing on the Bird Temple side, which is considered the easier side by most people. And I've made a few modifications to what the book says for setup for filming purposes. One, this board is silly long, so there are spaces for the decks up here, but to keep our eyes on the action, I have just taken the decks of cards. I have our item cards here and our artifact cards here and just a stack of those fear cards right here to the side. Also, as if this board wasn't long enough, there's a supplementary board that goes underneath this. And it does attach to the research track down here, but I usually just keep my pieces on my board until I research for the first time. Otherwise, all it's there for is to hold all of the components. But I already have them in containers, so it's just easier to keep them to the side. Also, it holds our first and second level digging sites, but I just have those in a stack over here along with our guardian tiles. So we're just not going to play with this board at all. As gorgeous as it is, the art in this game is fantastic, and I actually specifically like this side of the board. So gorgeous. So you basically set up a solo game just like a two-player game. That means I have these random bonus tiles set up on the research track, ignoring the ones that say 3 plus and 4. So they're there and there. Also, we randomly dealt out our idle tiles, and these have the victory points on the back and then the benefit face up on the front everywhere. But these top ones, they have one face down and one randomly face up. We have our temple tiles right here with 11 points, 6 points, and 2 points, 2 in each stack. We have our item row right here, and on the other side of this staff is going to be the market card for artifacts. We have our player board right here, and on the flip side of these player boards is the board for our rival. So it's a little different, and we'll go through what all of that is when we get there. We have our assistants over here that are available. And one change I also have made is I'm using these nice metal coins that look old. Look really cool. They work really well in this game. So those are our starting resources. We are always the second player, so we get the second player resources, which are one coin and one compass. We're playing yellow today, so we have both yellow explorers, and then the AI opponent gets all of the other colors of explorers. And they'll be represented on the research track by the red magnifying glass. The last thing we have to do to set up the AI is we have these white tiles right here. These are in every game. Then we have green tiles and red tiles. And I'm going to, if you put in all green tiles and throw out the red tiles, it's the easiest difficulty solo opponent. But because I'm a little rusty, I'm going to go up to only level three, which would be two green tiles we're going to replace. So what I do is I just randomly replace those. I'll pick two tiles. And we have, let's see, those two there. So... We go in here and we find the replacements for those. So we find the matching tiles are a little different, but they are matching. So we need this tile and actually that one. So right there on top, and then we put the rest of the green tiles there, and these go back to the box. We now should have 10 tiles altogether, five white 
and five with our mix of red and green. And all of the red and greens should be unique. So we'll shuffle those up and that will be the AI's deck. Now, typically on their player board, you put a stack, draw stack and a discard stack here. I just put them right here just because it's a little easier to pick up and maneuver. Then we have our starting deck right here. You always start with two funding cards, two exploration cards, and you grab two fear cards. So we have those four in our player color and then two fear cards, and we shuffle those up. So there is our six card deck. We're going to draw the top five cards and that's gonna be our starting hand and that's our draw pile. And that's it for setup. We are ready to start playing. And as I said, we are the second player. So we're going to always start with the rival's turn. The first thing the rival does is always flip this. Now notice that on the back of these, there are arrows pointing either left or right. Those will become important when making decisions for the AI. But the first thing we do is we flip one over and we have place a worker on a place with a compass. So we grab a worker and go over to the board. We want to place a worker again where there's a compass, but they always want to go to the highest point that they can. So um, there are no uncovered sites up here. So they're just going to place a worker right here and block that from us. So we will not be able to use that spot. And that's their turn. So we can take a look at our cards for our turn. We get an exploration, a funding, two fears, and another funding card. So there's a couple things going on. Our first card is an exploration card and it has a lightning symbol right here with the compass icon. And that indicates that this is a quick action. If we play this card, we can get a compass or we can play this card for its boat icon. So, we're going to take an action, they're going to take an action, and we're going to go back and forth like that. I think I'm going to play both of our funding cards for their quick action. So this is not our action. We're going to play those up here, and they each give us one gold. So we have three gold in our expedition. I think then for my main action, I'm going to play a fear card. Now fear cards, they jam up your deck, but they're also good for playing the boot icon for a spot at base camp. They are negative one for every one you have in your deck after them. So we're gonna play that and we're going to place a worker at a base camp location. So over here, we get to pick a spot that's open on any of these three. And I think I'm going to take this spot right here. Now this spot says discard a card for a gem. So that means that we're going to discard our other fear card and gain a gem. That's going to go right here to our player board and it's our opponent's turn. So our opponent's going to flip the next tile and it is gain an item. And this is the green, so it's going to be the lowest victory points. Let's go look at the items. So the items have victory points at the bottom. They are looking for the lowest victory point. They have out on the top tile, they have an arrow pointing that way, so they're going to take the rightmost whenever there is a tie. So they're gonna take this watch, they're gonna put this right here, and that's just gonna be a point afterwards. We then need to draw a card and replace it. The parrot comes out, and if it had been any other card, there is an arrow here, everything would have slid down. Let's play this card, not for the quick ability, but for the boat here. Now there's a hierarchy on here that you can always pay two to hire a pilot, but the hierarchy of travel is a plane can act as a car or a boat and a car or a boat can't act as either one of those, but they can always act as a boot and an airplane can of course act as a boot as well. So we played the boat as a boot. We're gonna go right here and we're going to gain two tablets. It's our apprentice turn again and they are going to place a worker where there is gold, prioritizing the leftmost. So this means they're going to place their other green worker right here. It's our turn again and we are out of cards to play, but we're not out of actions. The other two actions we can take are we can buy cards and we can research. 
So let's go with research. So we start down here at the bottom of the research track and we have two options. We can either research with a journal or a magnifying glass. Now, each one's gonna give us different benefits. However, the rule is, is that you can never have the journal higher than the magnifying glass on this track. You can have them at the same spot, but never higher. So we can't do research with the journal this time. So we're going to have to decide where we want to research. We can research this way to the left or this way to the right. Well, we have one gym, so we can pay this right here and start up the track. This means that right now we have banked one victory point for the end game and we immediately get this bonus of one coin, which brings us to four. Our opponent's gonna pull another tile and they are going to go on the board where there's an arrowhead. So they'll come onto the board right here. Now, there are no more spots available for them to go and place workers right now, so if they do any more of those, we can ignore them. For our next turn, I think we're going to go shopping up here. So we have four coins, and I think we're gonna spend all four of them to grab this machete. Now, all of these move down to fill in, and we draw a new item card, and it's going to be the large backpack. That's a really good card. And now we have our machete. These items always go at the bottom of your deck. So this is gonna go under the one card we still have. Our opponent draws and they are going to do a new action. They are going to do a research action. So our opponent wants to take a research action and the next tile on top pointed left. So they are going to go on the left track. Up one now they never get this benefit here but it has an assistant icon there so that means that if there is assistant icon they gain an assistant so to gain an assistant they take from the highest level pile there are four tiles in each pile and they're all equal right now so we look again at the top of the next tile and it says they're gonna take the leftmost from the tallest pile. So in this case, it's going to be this one and this just cycles the market and keeps things from us. So we're going to take their assistant and we'll just throw it right there on the board. They're never gonna use it and it doesn't give them any points. It just takes it from us. Back to our turn. Again, we have no cards. There's not really much I can do at this point. So I am going to pass. Now our opponent gets to continue to go until they run out of tiles. So they'll flip the next one, and this is defeat a guardian. If we look out here, there are no guardians. Guardians are these monster tiles on the other side. There are none here, so they're going to do a research action, which is the thing in parentheses if they can't do the top. So doing a research action, they have an option to go left or right, and the top tile tells them to go to the right. So they go here and they don't get anything, but they do steal this tile from us. They flip their next tile and it's place a worker. We know there's no new spaces for them to place. So they flip their next one and we have our second red tile. And this one says that they are going to find whatever round it is and do that action. In this case, it is discover a new site, a level one site, but not place a guardian. That's what that symbol is. So they're going to discover a new site and not place a guardian and they're going to prioritize to the left. So the rule with this is they always want to go as high up the board as they can, and of course we saw that they want to go to the left. So they're going to go as far left as they can, and they're going to discover a new site. They'll get this token, we'll deal with that in a second, and they draw a new site. And they never take any of the bonuses, they don't collect resources, that's what they get. Nice, cool snake tunnel. And now we have a whole new site available to us. They're going to take this token over to their mat. Now this token has a special ability on it that allows you to refresh an assistant. They don't use these abilities, but there is a row with each of the six abilities that are represented on these. So what we do is we match it up. It goes right there. We'll flip it over and now if they get another one that has that symbol, instead of going there, it will go over here. And instead of being worth three points at the end, it'll be worth two. And that just symbolizes the fear cards that they would have in their deck. 
they're going to continue on their rampage and they're going to grab the artifact. And the only one out there is the Serpent's Gold worth two victory points. And we draw Decorated Horn to replace it. They pull their final tile and it's a worker placement tile and they are done. So now that we've done all our actions and both have passed, there's a couple things we need to do to reset. We need to return our workers to our play areas. And if I was on a spot with a guardian tile, then I would gain a fear card whenever I pull back. But we're not in that situation, so everybody's just gonna come back normally. We do need to refresh the market. So we always exile, which is the term in this game for throwing out of the game these cards and the artifact on this side we move the staff to round two and now we have two artifact spots and one less item spot so we'll fill those in with a stone jar and the coconut flask so as we keep going through the five rounds of the game we're going to have more and more artifacts to discover and less and less of our items and supplies so we return our workers and we take the cards out of our play area and we shuffle these up and put them at the bottom of our deck. I really like the deck building mechanic in this and how they cycle. You don't have a discard pile. It just always, everything just goes underneath your deck. And we'll need to shuffle their deck of cards as well and move on to the next round. So round two, we start again and we have worker placement they're going to go where there's a gem so now we have to look up here they're always going to prioritize as high as they can remember so we look here there's no gem here so we go to where the only gem is which is right here and they're going to take up that spot our turn we're going to draw three four five cards and our hand's going to be the machete that we bought and then the other fear card we didn't draw two expirations and a funding I think the first thing I want to do is not a quick action. It's going to just be play the fear card and place a worker on a space with a boot. I'm going to take this spot that they took last time and that will gain us two compasses, bringing our total to three. Our rivals turn again and they're going to place where there are compasses. And they're just going to skip this action because there are no open spaces with compasses. We took it, so we blocked that from them. So I think that I want to play our machete. Now it's our full action. It doesn't have a lightning bolt. It has, we're going to gain two compasses and we're going to exile a card. So when we play this, we can exile a card from our hand or from our play area. So I'm going to exile this fear card from the game. And then we gain two compasses, bringing us up to five. Our rival gets to go and they want a place where there are tablets. No tablet here, so they're going to go right here. So looking at what we have, I think I'm going to play this exploration card for its boat icon. Now over here on the board, whenever we dig for a new site, we have a threshold we have to pay of three compasses. So we'll pay our three compasses. We paid a boat, so we get to pick one of these four areas right here. And I'm going to pick this one right here, and we're going to gain a tablet. I'll go ahead and flip that over and place a tablet there. Then we flip a tile randomly and we get whatever it says on it. It's going to be a compass and an arrowhead. That's fantastic. An arrowhead is what I need. So we'll put those there and then we gain a guardian. So the guardian is going to go on top and it has resources or actions in red. We have to take an action to defeat a guardian and this is what it's going to cost. So we have this cool scorpion guardian. And this is just gonna lay on top just like that. We take all of this stuff. And if this is still here, whenever we retrieve our workers, then we take a fear card. So over here, we're going to add this this tablet, a compass, and an arrowhead to our campsite. Our opponent takes their turn and they want to place where there are coins. And of course they can do that right there. 
looking at what we have available, I think I'm going to play this as a quick action for another compass. And I think that for my main action, I'm going to defeat this guardian that we just saw. Now this guardian has discard a card. So we discard that. We just don't get any benefits from it. It goes in our play area. We spend a compass and an arrowhead. Now this Guardian has on it a quick action, one time use ability. It's worth five points at the end, and whether we use this or not, it's gonna be worth five points. But for one time, we can use this to draw a card. So we wanna remember that we have that. So that was our action, and we draw the next one, and they're going to take the lowest victory point item, the leftmost spot. Looking up here, we have two number ones victory points, so we're gonna take the airdrop, which is the leftmost, everything slides down and we have bow and arrow coming out. Another free action that we can do is we have these slots up here with four, three, two, and one victory points. At the end of the game, for every spot that's open, we get that number of victory points. So if we don't fill in those spots, and there's a little lightning symbol that's hard to see, but as a free action, we can take an idol and put it in this spot. So right now we have 10 points, four plus three plus two plus one. We can put an idol over it. We still get the three points from the idol, but we lose the victory points underneath. And this gives us access to this chart of free actions here. And I think I'm going to, we can spend the gold and gain a gem. We can gain an arrowhead. We can gain two tablets. We can gain a gold and a compass, or we can draw a card. I think I'm going to gain an arrowhead. That was a free action. So for my main action, I'm going to spend one compass and one arrowhead, and instead of moving this, I'm going to research on this track with my journal. And this gives us zero victory points, but allows us to pick an assistant. So I come over here and I can pick any of these three assistants, and all of them are great, but I'm really eyeing this one right here. Now this one allows us to do one trade. It's a quick action, we can do one trade. Now, if we upgrade the assistant, it will allow us to do a trade and gain a compass. So we place this assistant right here and we can look and see that what these symbols mean. A trade means we can make one of these trades. We can trade a, a tablet for an arrowhead or an arrowhead for a gem. So let's go ahead and use that. We're gonna flip her sideways, meaning we've used her this turn. We're gonna switch that out for an arrowhead. So researching was our main action. They get to go and he wants to place a worker where there are arrowheads. And now he looks and he can go here because that is the highest spot over this one. Looking at the research track, that shiny new arrowhead that we just obtained, I think we're going to spend it and move this up one. Now we don't get the bonus tile because red already took it from us but we do gain a compass. So we're spending these and gaining that. And we have banked now two points instead of one. Our opponent draws the next one and they are gonna do a research action as well. So looking here, there's only one track to go up. They're gonna move up one and this does have the assistant icon there. So they're going to gain another assistant. And the assistant that they want to gain is going to be the leftmost on the highest column. So out of these two, it is this one. That goes back and they take that assistant right there. So looking up here at the market row, I don't have any money to spend, but I do have compasses. And that coconut flask is looking very good. So let's take the three compasses we have and buy the coconut flask. And that means that the next artifact is the Guardian's Ocarina. So looking at this coconut flask, we get two gold coins and the ability is use the effect of the silver side of one of the assistants available on the supply board. So we can use the effect of a silver side, the main side of an assistant without actually having it. And when we got an item, it went to the bottom of our deck. When we get an artifact, it gets played immediately here for free. Because every time we play it afterwards, there is a tablet icon here. We have to pay that cost in order to activate the artifact. So that means we're going to get two gold and we can use the effect of one of the assistants. 
So looking up here, we have a driver that will give us a compass or let us use her to pay the cost of a car. And we have a captain that kind of does the same thing except with a boat. And then we have this guy right here who will give us two coins. So I think we're gonna use the silver side of him, which is two coins. So just like that, I go from zero to four coins in one turn. Not bad. Our rival flips their next card and they want to defeat a guardian. There are no guardians on the board for them to defeat, so they're going to research instead. And they're going to research on the leftmost track, meaning they're going to go there and take this one. Now notice that there is no icon for the assistance. So whenever they do the secondary part of this action, when they can't defeat a guardian and do the research, they never gain an assistant, even if their icon for an assistant is there. So now that I've gained money to burn a hole in my pocket, let's go ahead and spend it and grab this tent, which goes to the bottom of our deck. That moves these down and out comes a hat. Hat's good. It gives you a quick action, gain a coin, and a compass. That's a really good one. So that was my action. They are going to do their red round two, discover one, and there will be a guardian placed on it. They're prioritizing the leftmost again, so they are going to grab a worker and place here. Oh, this is lovely. I love the art. Gosh, the art in this is so good. So they're gonna take this. They're not gonna get anything, but they are gonna place a guardian. And I have no idea, Hippopotamusosaurus stega? Stega hippopotamus, I don't know. These are a cool amalgam of creatures. And when they return their workers, they never take any fear. And this, of course, will go in this slot right here and take up that. They can't get any more of the exile icons without losing a point. It's back to me. There's nothing really I can do or want to do, so I'm just going to pass. They have one more tile to pull, and it is gain an artifact with the lowest amount of victory points, and that is the stone jar. Goes in their victory point pile. Guardian Zacharina is going to fall down and the Guardian's crown comes out. That's the end of that round. They can't do anything else. We have already passed. So we're going to return our workers. Remember, they do not get any fear. And we need to cycle out these two cards. This is going to move down. The crown is going to take that place. And two more artifacts are coming out. We have... The Ritual Dagger, exile a card and gain an airhead. Or Stone Key, move one idol on your player board from a slot back to your supply crates. That's a fantastic card. So let's return all of our workers and reset for the next turn. We've shuffled our five cards that we played last time, put them on the bottom of the deck, and draw five. I think we had three in the deck, so three new ones, and then two more. We have three left in our deck. And we need to refresh our assistant. We drew a machete, a tent, two fundings, and some fear. We're going to draw for our opponent, and they want to place a worker where there's a compass, and they are going to prioritize the rightmost. They want to go as high as they can, so they're going to pick this one. I think I want to use this special ability to draw one more card, and it is an exploration card. And I think I'll play a fear card to use the boot. And I think I'm going to go here and gain two compasses. Our opponent's going to draw their second one and they want to go where there's a gem. The only gem up here is right here. They've already taken that spot, so they're going to go right here. Next, I think I'm going to play my machete and we're going to exile a card. We're going to exile the second fear card. Should have no fear in my deck. And we're going to gain two compasses, bringing us up to four. Our opponent flips, and he wants to go where there are arrowheads. So going as high as he can, he's taking this spot, which is not good, because that would allow us to draw a card. I was kind of eyeing that. For my turn, I think that I will pay, use this exploration for its boat icon. I have three exploration tokens out of 
four that I can spend, we're going to go right here. So we're going to get one of these back because of that. We draw a card and it's going to be this temple right here. Really cool. And we gain a fear card. We also gain a gem and a tablet. We need to pull a guardian and ooh, two boots, a compass. This lets us exile a card and it's a nice fire ant looking guardian. And we add to our board an idol, a compass, a gem, and another tablet. Our opponent's turn, they are going to get an item with the lowest victory point. Looking up here, there are two one point victory cards. They are going to prioritize the leftmost card. So they're going to take this large backpack. These slide down and we have an ostrich. It's a really good card too. I'm going to spend these two funding cards for the gold. Two gold. And then I'm going to activate a site that I already occupy. So looking out here, I would like to activate this one a second time, but I don't want to get a second fear card because we're already going to get another one from this later on. So I think I'm going to activate this site again and gain two more compasses. Our opponent goes and they are going to defeat a guardian. Now this time they look and there is a guardian available. In fact, they're already at that spot. They don't have to place a worker. They don't have to do anything. They just defeat it. And there's a nice spot right here where they stack their guardians for five points. Looking up here, they, I really want to buy the hats. I have money for it, but they have already played their tile that grabs them an item. In each round they get one item and they get one artifact. They have not played their tile that has an artifact yet, so I think it's more important to grab that before they do. I'm going to get four compasses that I have, pay those for this ritual dagger. That means that the stone key slides down and ancient wine comes out. That's a good card as well. You gain a coin, use the effect of the gold side of one of the available uh, assistants on the supply board. Always, that's a really good card. Always love it. And as we remember, we play this down, we can exile a card, which means a fear card. If I thought that through, I might would have activated the other one to get a fear card. And we gain an arrowhead. Our opponent flips the next and they're going to occupy a spot with a coin. The only spot they have to occupy with that is down here. Since I'm not worried about buying anything, let's go ahead and research again. We're going to research with our journal, moving that up. We're going to pay a tablet and an arrowhead. And we're going to gain an assistant. So looking over here at the assistants, I like all of them a lot. But I think I'm going to take this one because it can give me a compass. And it can give me a car. And if I flip it over and upgrade it, it will give me two cars and it'll give me a go or give me a gold and a compass. So that's really good. So we'll place that right there. Opponent flips the next tile and they're going to research as well, prioritizing the rightmost area. There's no rightmost to prioritize, so they're going to go up and there's no assistant for them to gain on this icon here. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of shenanigans here. I'm going to use this idol, cover up that two, and I'm going to take two stone tablets. Then I'm going to use this free action. That was free action. This is a free action to trade up. Remember we can trade one tablet for one arrowhead. I also want to go ahead and use this one to gain one compass. We're going to spend what we just gained, the two tablets and the arrowhead bumping our magnifying glass up to here, gaining us one compass. We did a research action. They're going to place a worker. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to pay one of our gold and we're going to get the hat. Putting it on the bottom of our deck. Next to the last tile and they're going to do their round three action of discovering a level one area. Next to the time they're going to start discovering one of the level two areas. And they're prioritizing leftmost. So always going high 
they are going to discover this here. Nice juicy gem. They get that token and they don't place a guardian. This token they haven't gotten yet. It goes right there and they are nine points up. I don't think I have any shenanigans left in me, so I think we're going to pass. They have one tile left. They are going to grab that artifact and they want the lowest cost. So that's going to be the ancient wine. And that's going to get replaced with the monkey medallion. Our round is over. When I pull back my worker, I'm going to gain a fear card. And this should have moved down with bear trap replacing it. Now bow and arrows and guardian's crown are going to be exiled from the game. This moves over, these move down, and we deal two more artifacts for round four, the penultimate round. So here we have the board state going into round four and the five cards that we drew are tent, exploration, hat, exploration, and coconut flask. As always, our opponent wants to go first and he wants to place a worker where there's a gem prioritizing the rightmost area. Looking up here, there is a gem rightmost right there. I think the first thing I wanna do is I want to play my hat. That's going to get us a coin and a compass. Our opponent's gonna go again and they want to occupy a site where there are tablets. And of course they do because tablets are what I need. So they look here and this is the highest spot with tablets. I think for my turn, I'm going to use this exploration card for its car ability. And we're going to place a worker or a explorer right here. Now, whenever we go to dig a site, we have to pay compasses. Whenever we just visit a site, we don't have to do that anymore. So we're going to be able to draw one card and gain an arrowhead. There's our arrowhead and we draw one card. It is a funding card. Our opponent flips their next and they are going to get the lowest victory point artifact, prioritizing the right. Up here, the runes of the dead is that card. Ah, nasty card. And of course, we want to slide the passage shell down and put out the sundial, which gains two tablets or you can pass and gain a gem. It's hard to get gems for free. You know what? That card looks so good to me right now that I'm going to spend two compasses to gain the sundial. We place that in our play area and I'm not going to pass yet. So we're going to gain two tablets. Our rival flips their next tile and they want to research. There's not going to be any more assistant icons, so they're not going to gain any more assistance. They are prioritizing to the right. So they move here and they take away that bonus tile. They're up to 12 points. On our turn, we did not replace the sundial, so we're going to replace it with the obsidian earring is what we draw. Draw up to two cards from the bottom of your deck, keep one, and discard the other. And I think I'm going to spend one tablet and play our coconut flask. Remember, these costs, these have a cost when we play them out of our hand. So we gain two gold, always happy to get two gold, and we can use the effect of the silver side of one of the assistants. So looking up here, we still have the same two that we've had before, but our newer one is gain an item at a discount of one or gain an artifact at a discount of one compass. And I think I'm going to use that ability right there. This means that I can gain one of these cards with a discount of one. So I'm going to pay two for this ostrich before it disappears. The rival draws a card and they are going to go where their money is. Looking out here, the not a lot of tiles with coins on them this game. So we're going to go, they're going to go right there. Looking at what we have available to us, I think I'm going to play the tent, which allows us to activate a site that we already occupy. We're not going to do a level two site, of course, so we don't have to pay the extra. And that means we're going to activate this site that we were just on with draw a card, which gives us another funding and another arrowhead, which I will really take that. The next tile for them is gain an item with the lowest victory points. We never refilled this after we got the ostrich. Oh, the 
automobile. Fantastic. But they're going to take the bear trap. This moves down, which means it's going to disappear and is replaced by the grappling hook. Also another great card. We have now ended up with two arrowheads, so I think we're going to move this up to right here, going from four to six points. This means that we get to draw a card immediately. We get our machete, that's great. And we get a compass for our research. They draw their next tile and they're going after their second guardian. So they're going to take out this red ant and take that opportunity away from us. They now have 10 points worth of guardians. On this turn, I like this automobile. I only have two coins, so I'll play a quick action of funding to get my third. And I'll take that automobile. This is going to move down and out comes Sturdy Boots. Our rival is going to place a worker where there is a arrowhead. Looking here, the highest open spot is right there. I want to do another research action. I want to move up here and that's going to cost a coin and a gem. I do have a gem. I don't have a coin. So I'm going to play a quick action for funding to get a coin. And that's going to give me one compass. Next to last card for the rival. And they're going wherever there is a compass. The highest spot, of course, is right there. I think I'm going to, on my turn, play my machete. Now I have to exile a card, and of course we want to get rid of fear cards, but I don't have any. So let's get rid of this exploration card. Out of the game, and I get two compasses. And I'm going to go ahead and play this as an extra action to gain my sixth compass. They flip their final tile, and it is round four, so they are going to go to a level two discovery, and they're going to place a guardian, and they are going to prioritize. I flip this over, and look, it is the rightmost. So they're going to place their explorer right here, and they're going to take both of these. We'll deal with those in just a minute. They're going to draw a level two, and, oh, that's, that's juicy. Nice. And of course, it said they need to place a guardian. This wild boar with saber tooth like teeth craziness goes right there. Now, on their board, they pulled the double tiles and they get both icons. But we look and there's no spot for this one. So that's going to be a negative one. And then the face down one is always a negative one. So whenever they take one of that double spot, they automatically get a negative one for that. So it's only worth two for both of those. Now I would really also like to explore into one of those areas, but I don't have enough vehicles, nor do I have any money. And that would have been better spending my money on buying an airplane. But I didn't, and that was a bad misplay. Bad, bad thinking there. So we're just gonna have to spin three of these and discover a new location, and we'll use the car off of this one. So spinning three, I think we're going to go here and get one of those back. So we have that, we have that. We're going to pull this, oh nice. I need, I need tablets and I need money. So we're going to gain a coin and two tablets. And of course we get, oh, speaking of tigers, look at that. Ooh, man, two compasses and an arrowhead to get rid of him. All of this is going to go back to our board right here. So we have four Compasses, three tablets, which is great because we have a good number of artifacts and only one coin, which is not great. And I think I'm going to use a free action to trade up one of these for an arrowhead. Our opponent is out of tiles, so they are passing. Now I could defeat this. Uh, it, I don't know if I would need the boat necessarily, but it's five points. 
I could defeat this. I have two compasses and an arrowhead. But I also have enough to move either this up, which takes me from one point to two, or this up, which takes me from nine to 12 and lets me draw a card. This one will let me upgrade an assistant. Thinking it through, I actually think I can pull off doing both. So let's start with researching. We're gonna actually move this one up. So I need to pay two tablets and I need to pay one arrowhead. Now over here on our board, this allows me to flip one of these two assistants. I think I'm gonna flip this one right here. And what's cool is that even though I've used it, when you flip it, it unexhausts. It refreshes your assistant, so we can use it again. And I think I am going to go ahead and use it. I'm gonna gain a coin and a compass. That's five compasses. Then I'm going to do some shenanigans with this idol. I'm going to cover up this three spot and I'm going to gain an arrowhead. And we know to defeat this guardian, we need two compasses and an arrowhead. So he is defeated. That's gonna be five points for us. I have a surplus of three compasses left. I think I'm gonna use it to buy the stone key. It's two points at the end of the game. Let's slide these down. And out comes the Tiger Claw head pin. Oh, nice. So the stone key goes in our play area and it allows us to move one of these back to our supply crate. So let's do that. That's really powerful. Not only does it eat, it can you give us three points back, which is great, but it also gives me another use of that if I need it. Okay, so end of the round, we need to exile these two cards. That means that this moves over and we are on our last round. Sturdy boots are all we have left here. These are gonna move all the way down and we get star charts. Ooh, pay one to activate any two different campsites. Oh, that's fantastic. And then mortar, which is exile card and gain two. We're gonna return our workers and shuffle our decks. So going into the final round, this is kind of what it looks like. We've got a lot that has built up and been discovered out here. I have a plan to get up here, uh, but I am a little resource threadbare and I'd like to move up this track once or twice. I don't like them being ahead of me. So we'll see what we can do. If they don't get there first, I think I can pull it off. But of course, saying that they get to go first and they are going to defeat a guardian. And there's a guardian available. They're gonna place one here, and that's five more points. They're up to 15 just in Guardians. We need to draw our five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And we know we have some things we bought. We bought our ostrich and our automobile. Can't have too many modes of transportation. We have our ritual dagger and a fear card, which stinks, and funding. So let's go ahead, oh. That automobile by itself would get me to where I need to go. Hmm. But this, this would also... Okay, let's play the automobile as a fast action for two compasses. I need to use that for a compass and a coin. Let's go ahead and spend our funding for another coin. So that's four. And then we're going to play our fear card and place him way down here in base camp. We're going to gain the measly two tablets. They're going to get the lowest artifact and the only one out there is the mortar that is one victory point. And that gets replaced with the sacred drum. Ooh, refresh both your assistants just by discarding a card. Fantastic. I'm gonna play the ritual dagger. It's going to cost us one tablet. We have to exile a card. Of course, it's going to be the fear card. And we gain an arrowhead. The opponent's going to grab the only item card out there. And that gets replaced. Sturdy Boots gets replaced with journal. 
Exile this card to research with your ooh with your journal for free. Uh, that's always good earlier in the game. Let's go ahead and put this shenanigans up here to gain two more tablets. All right, so we're going to do that, and then we're going to research with two tablets and an arrowhead. Two tablets and a hairhead gets us even with them and allows us to draw a card, which is going to be a funding card. That's not what I want. Our rival is going to draw a card and it's going to be gain a gem. And by gain a gem, I mean they're going to go to the rightmost spot and that's going to be that one right there. I've done some bad misplays, so we're just going to try to make the best of it. Uh, we're going to play the ostrich we get to place, uh, we get to draw a card, we get the stone key. That's great. And we can place a worker with a discount of one card. I'm going to place it right there, which allows me to draw another card, which is the tent. Oh, that's good. And it gives me an arrowhead. Our opponent flips and they are going to research and they're going to prioritize the left. So they're going to research right there. They're at 16 points. So I'm going to use the tent to activate a site that I occupy, and it's going to be the one that was at base camp for two of these tablets. Our opponent gets to go, and they want to occupy a place with an airhead. Looking out here, the highest available is right there. We're going to pay a tablet to activate our stone key where we can move one of these off of here the opponent flips a card they want to go to a place with a compass and the topmost is right there now i have no more workers so my only real hope is i'm going to go ahead and flip this over because i can't use that my only real hope is to do research I can also purchase some things. That's going to get me some piddly points, but I'm, I actually might can do something. Hold on. So if I go up here on the research track, I'll get another compass. That will give me four and allow me to buy something that may allow me to bump up one more time. I need a gem though. So let's pay one, one, and one. To move up here, that gains us our fourth compass. That was our action, so our opponent's gonna go, and on round five, they are going to discover the rightmost area. So they're going to dig here, which means that they'll get both of these, and they're both worth two points, that one because it was flipped down, and that one because they've already taken that token. And they discover this beautiful site. Oh, that's so gorgeous. And they don't put a guardian out on the last round. So they've already pulled their defeat a guardian and their research. So that's as high as they're going to go. I just need to bump up one more time with those three things. So I've got to find a way to get a gem. Looking at our board, I can always use this here and that would be great. But looking at the offer up here, I have four. I can pay this to activate two different sites and maybe gain some supplies. And I think that may be the smarter way to go. So let's pay our four here to get star charts. This gets moved down and out comes inscribed blade. We play this in our play area, pay one to activate any two different campsites. So looking down here, I definitely want to activate this. I can discard the funding in my hand to gain a gem. And I definitely think I can do with two more tablets because I can easily trade those up for arrowheads. Our opponent goes and they want to occupy a space with a coin. That's going to be right there. To continue our research, I need a coin, a gem, and I'll need a compass, which I don't have. So I'm going to have to use this to gain a coin, 
and a compass. So going up here, I get to take the leftmost, the most points here. So we're gonna jump from 16 points to 23 and lock that in. And if he could move, then he would go here. We then also get to look at the two face down bonus tiles and take one of them. We can either draw a card or gain a compass. Hmm. I think the safer move for us is going to be gain a compass. So we'll put that there. Our opponent takes their last and has placed a worker, but they have no more workers to place. So they are done. Now that the opponent's done, I think the only way to maximize our score is through research. Now we can pay and continue to move that up. That will gain us more points. Or we can try to bump up a couple times here. What happens is there are costs here and then you have the pyramid. So if I pay, let's say one gem, I would take the topmost two point tile. If I want to take a six point tile, I have to pay whatever the sum of two of these are. If I want to take an 11 point tile, I have to come up somehow with all three of those. And if we look at my supply, I'm very close to having it. It would be a coin, two tablets, this, I could trade this up to an arrowhead, and then I would just need a gem and that would give me 11 points. And looking back up here, that also hurts me because I can't get a gem to get, or I don't have a gem to get any of those six points. So I think we're going to use this to trade this for an arrowhead. And then looking at the track here, for one turn we can play the one compass we have with an arrowhead to gain two points here. And then we can pay the other two tablets and a coin to gain this two point bonus here. So just some poor planning on my part. So here we have those two in our base camp, one coin left over, not much we can do with it. And I think that's it. I think that's the end of the game. We're gonna pass and it's game over. Okay, let's score up this puppy. Our rival's gonna be Belloc and we are Indy. So we score them pretty much the same way that we score a normal player. Right here, we look at where they are on the track and they are right here with 16 points. And then we look to see if they have any bonus tiles, they do not. We count up here, they have three, six, nine idols, and these are all worth two points each. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So let's put 17 right there. And then of course their guardians, they have five, 10, 15. They're not gonna have any fear cards and we just need to tally up the cards that they got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So they did get one two point card. So two, four, six, eight, 10, and 11. So to double check my math, 16 plus 17 plus 15 plus 11 is 59. That's their score, let's look at ours. I'm not sure if we did too terribly much better. So we look at where we are on the track and we remember that we made it all the way up to 23 up here. So 23 points. We have four here. We have three, six, nine, only nine. Oh, that's terrible. We defeated two guardians for 10 points. We have no, let's see, that's our starting cards minus the one we got rid of. We have no fear cards in our deck. So let's tally these. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17 points. 
and adding that up is a pretty abysmal 63. That's not one of my better scores. Usually I'm in the 70s at least. But there we go. Belloc and Indy, us being Indy, we won. And wasn't by a big margin either. A lot of misplays. Like I said, I'm pretty rusty. I haven't played this uh, since the beginning of the year. I hope you enjoyed that playthrough of Lost Ruins of Arnak. Let's go back up top. And that was Lost Ruins of Arnak. Man, this is just such a fantastic game. I just really enjoy all the mechanics in it. The resource management, the deck building, and the worker placement. Kind of like Dune Imperium that I did earlier this year. Link up in the corner. This has got a mix of kind of those same mechanics. Although I don't feel they're the same game in any way. They have this just nice mix of mechanics that I really enjoy. The opponent has a variable difficulty and right as I finished recording this they released the solo campaign at least the first two chapters on CGE's website uh, where you can print it out or use the web-based app. So hopefully we'll be doing some of that in the future because I'm really excited to dive into that. But overall this is just a fantastic game with a lot of variety, a lot of variability and a great way to up and lower the difficulty of that AI opponent with two sides of the board. So there's just a lot to come back to and visit. All in all, I really, really enjoy Lost Ruins of Arnak. It's one of my favorite games that I've played this year. And I can't wait to get it to the table again and get through that solo challenge campaign. And if I made any mistakes, please leave those in the comments below to help everyone else out. I don't come here for strategy because I am a little rusty at this game, but it's still just so much fun no matter what level of player you are. If you enjoyed this content and you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing because that helps our channel grow. And definitely think about hitting the thumbs up icon because that helps our channel reach more and more people who are looking for solo game and solo board game related content or just good board game related playthroughs. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, happy gaming.